Good morning, this is Reverend Deb Hansen with my husband Dave Atkinson coming to you from the, our home, but for First United Methodist Church, Portsmouth, New Hampshire. We gather together this morning to worship and to praise God for all that we've been given. And so we invite you to be part of this worship time and also invite you to check out our website at fumcportsmouth.com. Let us worship. God's grace is far more abundant and amazing than we could ever imagine. Today, we worship together, connected as brothers and sisters in Christ, and blessed by the grace of God that accepts, loves, and nurtures us. Thanks be to God. Let us worship. Today we're talking about grace, God's grace, the grace that Jesus offered. And so one of my very favorite hymns, and I have many, but one of them is called Grace Alone. So I'd like to share that with you this morning. Every promise we can make, every prayer and step of faith, every difference we will make is only by His grace. Every mountain we will climb, every ray of hope we shine, every blessing left behind is only by His grace. Grace alone which God supplies, strength unknown He will provide. Christ in us, our cornerstone, we will go forth in grace alone. Every soul we long to reach, every heart we hope to teach, everywhere we share his peace, is only by his grace every loving word we say every tear we wipe away every sorrow turned to praise is only by his grace grace alone which god supplies Strength unknown he will provide. Christ in us, our cornerstone, we will go forth in grace alone. Reading from the Word, Matthew 15, verses 21 through 28. Jesus left that place and went away to the district of Tyre, and Sidon. Just then, a Canaanite woman from that region came to them and started shouting, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But he did not answer, did not answer her at all. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she keeps shouting after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. He answered, It is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. She said, Well, yes, Lord, even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from the master's table. Then Jesus answered her, Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done to you as you wish. And her daughter was healed instantly. Let us pray. O oh God, may the words of our mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Have you ever experienced not fitting in? What were the circumstances? How did you feel? What did you do? In today's scripture lesson, Jesus entered the Gentile region of Tyre and Sidon. This was an area where a number of people who were descendants of the K 
Canaanites lived. When, it, when Israel entered the Promised Land, they had to conquer Canaan in order to live there, and they succeeded. But the defeated Canaanites became bitter enemies. Of course, that happened many years earlier, and the term Canaanite eventually disappeared. In the Gospel of Mark, we find the term Syrophoenician women, which was apparently more current for Jesus' day. However, the writer of Matthew uses Canaanite to make a point about how outcast this woman really would have been in relation to Jesus and his disciples. Commentator John Petty writes, <clears throat> Matthew deliberately resurrects that word, Canaanite, in order to underline the outsider status of this woman. Not only is she a woman, not only a foreigner, not only unclean, but an ancient enemy besides. In addition, she's a Gentile, another strike against her. Bloodlines were very important in Jesus' day, and this woman had just about nothing that would connect her to Jesus and everything that a good Jewish man would reject and ignore. And it appears that Jesus does just that, at least at the beginning of this story. The disciples wanted him to send her away because she kept shouting at him, asking him to pay attention to her, to listen to her plea. Jesus appeared to act as if he didn't hear her. But as she persisted, he turned to her and insulted her by saying that he had come only for the house of Israel and that it wasn't right to give them their food to the dogs. This has always been shocking to me. Did Jesus call her a dog? In Jesus' day, dogs were not considered pets, but pests. According to the disciples, this woman was definitely a pest. However, she was also very persistent in asking for mercy and trying to get Jesus' attention. She only wanted her daughter to be healed. Somehow she broke through to Jesus. Somehow she reached his heart, opened his mind to recognize that she had faith that actually is even more powerful than the disciples. For most of Jesus' ministry, the disciples floundered around trying to figure out who Jesus really was. And this Canaanite woman immediately saw him as the Son of God and believed in him. Jesus healed her daughter and commended her for her great faith. And as Peter Woods writes, at least here is someone who gets it. The wrong person, of course, the wrong culture, in the wrong place, speaking to the wrong in the wrong accent. It should be all wrong. But don't you know, it's actually all right. This woman understood that Jesus was the Son of God and was not just for the nation of Israel, but for the entire world. We have numerous instances where Jesus ministered to the Gentiles, those who were outcasts, and were marginalized as his ministry continued and expanded to include many others. Today, we're faced with many ways in which people are not accepted or treated badly because of their culture, the color of their skin, their gender, how old they are, or how young they are, their sexual orientation, for their religious practices, and a number of other behaviors that judge, reject, and ostracize them how do we as a church open our minds and hearts to welcome those who deal with this in their lives? How do we stand with them? How do we relate to them? So here are a few thoughts, just a few from the many anti-racism workshops I have attended. Listen to others who are experiencing oppression. And don't just listen, but learn from them. Stand with them in the struggle and with, in whatever way possible. Speak out when we hear abusive language, bullying, bad jokes, or derogatory language. Support organizations that promote an equal treatment and justice. Those are just a few things that we can do. At the top of our list, we would add prayer. 
Pray for the oppressed. Pray for our own complicity. Pray for justice and pray for our nation and the world. We can make a difference by not being ambivalent or apathetic. We can change attitudes beginning with our own, learning about what to do to support and advocate for our brothers and sisters who are going through these challenges. May we walk a mile in their shoes to try and understand and then walk right along with them on their journey. The Canaanite woman teaches us that speaking out makes a difference. She teaches us about persistence and she teaches us about the, a faith that doesn't falter. May we learn from her and may we as the church be agents for change, justice, equality, acceptance, and sharing God's love with all. Amen. Our prayer for this morning. Oh God, at times we forget that your grace is big and wide and deep enough to include everyone. And there are times when we forgot to offer your grace to others. Forgive us when we fail to see someone else as your beloved child. Forgive us when we pass judgment on them because they are different from us. Forgive us for, man, for unkind thoughts and actions or for the ambivalence that keeps us from standing up for them and with them. Send us forth with renewed determination to treat others with respect and acceptance. Thank you for your assurance of your grace in our lives. Amen. By the grace of God, we know that we are forgiven. And may we share that forgiveness with others and know that we can move forward, move on, that we can always be moving, as John Wesley said, toward perfection, not flawlessness, but perfection in God's love. That is God's grace, God's gift to us. Wherever you are, whatever you're doing, we invite you to join us in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, Father who art Lord in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Well, we can't have a, a sermon and a, a theme on grace and not have Amazing Grace uh, as our closing hymn. And so if you know, I'm only singing three verses, but I invite you to sing along wherever you are and to know that God's amazing grace is for all of us. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now am found. Was blind, but now I see. Through many dangers, toils, and snares, I have already come. Tis grace hath brought me safe thus far, and grace will lead me home. The Lord has promised good to me, his word my hope secures. He will my shield and portion be as long as life endures. May the grace of God be with you. May you see that grace, claim it, know that it is for you as God's gift. And may you offer that grace to others. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Amen.